Hello, YouTubers. Hey, I found this stick here. As you know, or a lot of you know, that I pre-finished a lot of sticks and have them ready for a future project. Now, I was taking a look at this one. I thought, well, I'm not going to do any carving on it because it it kind of looks magical to me. And uh, see, it has not a natural design in there. I didn't do that. There's some more right there. And actually, this is worm, uh, worm holes that was under the bark. And uh, looks quite eerie and magical. So I decided with this one, and this one's only an inch and a quarter at the top, and tapers down nicely to three quarters at the bottom. And uh, it's about maybe 40, Four forty-five will measure it, uh, but um, anyway, what I'm what I'm going to do? I thought it did look sort of mystical, so I'm going to put a crystal ball right on top of it. So stay tuned. We'll look at that process and see what it looks like. Well, the first thing I do is get my drill gun out, get it ready. I have two bits. So I'm going to cut one quarter inch, the other one for a pilot hole. Lay that down and a center punch. And just from eyeballing here, I'm gonna to try to find about the center, which would be right in that area there somewhere. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that that's the center. You can see that right there. Now, I wanna also make a center a hole in the bottom of the crystal. And it's not gonna be very deep but we'll, we'll put it in there. And uh, that looks good. Now we'll take a, put a forward hole in there. I say I'm just gonna put a little bit in that because, but that's deep enough. We don't want it to show the middle of that crystal too much. So, what if anything, it'll leave a little light in there that makes it look even more mystical. Right there, we want to get this stick over the edge of the table a little bit, and then I'm going to drill a hole right there in that center too. Okay, that's it. Now we're going to open up and put this quarter inch in here, and there'll be a quarter inch dowel go in there to kind of help hold that in place. So I'm going to drill that out a little bit. I'd recommend kind of holding that, um, wrapping that nicely in a vise, gripping it up tight if you're not comfortable holding the ball while you're drilling it. But with that small pilot hole, I find that the drill is very steady, not apt to come off and go through your finger, but that's really not the safest way to do it. I'd recommend, if you want to do it safely, wrapping up like this in a towel, put it in your vise and your drill press, and go for it that way. Uh, now I'm going to drill this one out, and... Uh, on the wood, it does have a tendency to slip, so I get my hand back a little. Just a little is all we need. Now, after putting my drill bits, drill gun, and all the way, I put my towel back out of the way a little bit, and uh, I go cut me a three quarter inch dowel, quarter inch, and uh, I see that it don't, it, when it bottoms out, it just leaves a little, oh, an, an eighth to three sixteenths out of that hole. And then this hole is about um, three sixteenths deep, actually. But you want to try it on there and make sure the dowel then goes over that hole and then fits snugly against the the wood. If it don't, you don't want to drill this hole out any further. 
you want to leave that at least an eighth of an inch sticking out, just drill that hole a little deeper until that sits flatly on the uh, surface of your of your stick. Now see how what I did, I, I ground that off to about the diameter of the top of the stick. So what happens is that goes down and that fits pretty well on the diameter. If you can see, don't have it glued on there. Now, what I want to do is take, uh, mix my two-part epoxy of JB Weld here, and I put me about a, a wide inch strip that's about a half inch wide, and I take the other one, and I put me the same amount, one about a half inch wide, when it gets done, and, and if it's not a half inch wide, you make it a half inch wide. So we want to put, now that one got a little bigger, so I'll put a dab more, put a squeeze more of that A in there. Now I take a popsicle stick, and I just mix it up really good. Now you don't have to mix this three or four minutes like you would resin epoxy, but the JB Well calls you move, mix it pretty well. So scrape it down in the middle, and I just use the, I, when I get a nice little cardboard box, it's fairly, not real thin, but fairly sturdy. I cut that box up and make little squares like this just to mix my epoxy on. So the epoxy don't soak in but very little in the cardboard before you use it and uh, gives you a nice little mixing palette. And uh, what I do is, is I'll put a little on the bottom of this unit here and we don't want any to run down, so it just kind of got some in that hole. And uh, we'll make sure we don't have uh, any that's going to run down the side on us. Kind of hold it level. Now, take this one, and we'll take that pin out. And I want to put epoxy all over the top of that real good. Make sure that's covered real well. See how it drips out. But uh, with that, generally hold it up. Let me see, adjust the camera up a little bit. If you hold it up like this, it'll have a tendency to lay on there without running too much. But what you do now is get you a, have your little sponge or rag ready and just wipe it off around there so it don't, so it don't try to run down. And it'll start, once you squeeze it out, it'll, it'll run anyway. So let's put that dial in there now. And remember, we can hit the bottom, press it down there, and still have plenty sticking up. And uh, you want to continue, and you can wipe, wipe off the edge of the top a little bit if you want, because that's going to squeeze out. And now make sure there's no epoxy on your hands on the end of your fingers and lay, carefully lay the ball right on there and find the, find the uh, center and just push down. Now that dowel will hold it pretty steady and it'll make a strong fit right on top. And see, you don't see the dowel inside the crystal. And uh, if you look down in there, it looks like you can see a, a diamond. But uh, what I'll do now is take my, take my soft cloth and make sure I don't have any epoxy that's ran out on the side. And what we want to do after that is, is just walk away, prop this up to where it stands straight up like you got it now, and uh, come back 45 minutes, 15 minutes they call for say is enough. And I, that probably is. But uh, real, 
interesting what I'm seeing down in there. Uh, you can in, if you get it in your hand, you'll see, looks like a, another crystal way down in there. And that's created by that dowel pin. I don't know if you can see it over the, might be able to see it. See what I'm talking about? Okay, let's, let's set this up and quit messing with it and allow that epoxy to dry before we do anything else. Here we are <clears throat> about to end up with this wrap on this stick. And uh, i tell you what, I didn't record the beginning of this because it's, it's wrapped all the way down the same way. I want to demonstrate this knot. Hold your hand again. Hold your hand in the uh, rope in the uh, palm of your hand. Turn to the left, just like paracord the easy way, but just a little different. Bring this back foot over the end. And the same thing. Now before, on paracord the easy way, we would tighten this up. And we would pull it back this way, though, and put the hand remember, on the right and turn it. And we'd pull it this way each time, pull it to the right. This way, you continue to tighten, and, and just, that's it. You pull it to the left. Come out here, put it around the end the same way. Come up here, and you just pull it to the left when it tightens up. And that gives you a tighter, similar spiral, but it's a tighter, it's closer together. And it's not sticking up as far. So just that, that's another way of doing it. And I think I'm gonna give you the rest of my cord. I'm getting around, uh, getting pretty toward the end of it. So we'll go around that way. <clears throat> And we tighten it up. But we have to keep it pulled down as before. Lay it in your palm like this. Turn to the left. And come all the way back and put that loop in the end. That makes your knot. And bring it up. And just where it ties at the end of the other knot. And that's where it'll have to go. You'll find out if you do it. You, you'll find out there, it gets tight. And it, to get it tight, it'll have to be in the right spot. So, again, turn to the left. Put it down here. And what you'll do, you'll run out of room to where you can't loop it through the end anymore. But I've used, I've decided to make this one a little different than a lot of them. Uh, I've used a whole spool of paracord or a whole 50, uh, 50 feet is what it is. A whole uh, package of paracord and it's uh, the standard, I think, is 50 feet. You can find some of it. But see, your paracord is getting shorter all the time. And it still reaches in there to go around the end. And I'll show you what happens when you get to the end of it where it won't loop around. There you are. Just automatically goes where it belongs. There. Now I'm still going over the end of it. My spirals continue to go around. I don't know if I'll make it that time. Yeah, we'll make it one more time. Now, this time, probably too short. We can't really get it down here to the end because we run out of 
And so what we do is, see what this, I barely made it there. What you do is instead of going down to the end, you can just simply bring it, loop it underneath the bottom and put it through there. You can do that too, all the way through if you want it, but it's easier and faster to slip it through the end. Wow. Now, show you one more time on that one. Hold this loop out here and let it hang down. See what I'm doing? You gotta hold the end of it here. Reach under and pull it and then pull it through your loop just like that. That makes the same knot. And then you this much wrapping, your finger, one well, of your fingers will get a little sore there. It can. So you don't want to do you don't make your fingers too sore. So now hold it up, reach, hold it up like this, reach under the stick, come up, and just stick that in through that loop. That makes the same, and then you have to turn it till it gets down to where the knot starts. That's, that's uh, basically all there is to this knot. Now I'm gonna try to get another one in there and see as that gets smaller, you loop that around and just loop it through itself there. And that makes you a, a knot like this. And then you just, what I do when I get down to there is I'll loop it. I'll, I've got one loop through there I loop it through another time and see if we can pull that. Tight there. Okay. Now there we have that down that far all the way down the stick. Now let's see what we do. When we get down there, what do we do with this tail? So what we're gonna do now is we cut that off fairly short, but we want to make sure it's tight, get you some thin CA glue is what I use. And I put a little C, thin CA right in that it don't have any desire to come off of there right there now that won't come loose on you now we'll just take that loop and stick it up stick your needle nose cutters these little fingernails Cutters uh, seem to work best, but I lost mine. Went to buy me another pair. And uh, actually, I was thinking about stealing them out of my wife's uh, fingernail clipper apparatus, but she'd miss that right away. Probably couldn't get away with that. So now we'll take this in and just uh, tuck some of it under there if we can. And once we get it crammed in there a little bit, just those loose fuzzy ends, and it just it just makes a, a neat little tie at the end there, especially if you can get rid of all that all that puzz that's left. But usually a sharp, 
sharp pointed cutters will uh, will take care of that, which we don't have out here today. But uh, that leaves a very loose little end that won't come out anyway. I'm gonna put some more CA on that. And then I'm gonna hit it with the accelerator as soon as I get it pushed down a little bit. And push it down there. Now to get rid of all that fuzz, you won't be able to see. Don't look like a, a frayed rope there. And you push that down before you harden it. Once you put that accelerator on there, it does, it does harden up. So let's, uh, let's get the camera turned around and see what it looks like. Well, that's about it for this video. You can just barely see my crystal ball on this mystical stick I made now. It's a little shorter, and it's for the, it's for a tall person or, you know, me. I'm still standing with the elbow about 90 degrees and standing here. That's not too bad, but a shorter person can hold it right here, right here, right here. That's the reason I put paracord all the way down, you see it goes quite a bit. It is actually measured, let me measure it here a minute. That measures, uh, paracord is 18 inches. 18 inches from here all the way down to here. That's 50 foot of paracord. 18 inches around that stick and it's got that sparrow all the way around. <clears throat> like I say, by by doing that, by putting your loop in there and pulling it to the left every time, you get a tighter spiral. Now, the spiral is going to be a little bit wider, and uh, if you pull it tightened to the right and keep tightening to the right every time is all you have to do. So <clears throat> that's the difference between the two. And I think it makes a fairly neat spiral all the way down, the, all the way down. And see, when you get to the end, you either tuck it under there, tuck it under your last cord, or you can actually uh, put CA glue on it right there to keep it from coming loose and, uh, and just clip that end off a little bit. So there you have it. The mystical walking stick with the crystal ball, and I think you can see the diamond right down on them. See that diamond right down in the end of it. So it, it shows up pretty good. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, post a comment. Comments down below. I always answer my comments, and I appreciate your likes and subscriptions. So hit that bell if you want to get notified of any any future, uh, which there will be future uh, videos. Matter of fact, I put out one about every Saturday or Sunday. Sometimes I'll throw one in the middle of the week. So hit that bell, be notified for uh, other videos, and hey, I'll see you in the next video.